let's take a whiz through the, the topics and then we'll see if there's anything that we want to spend some specific time on. So this is the last lecture, right? Exams are the week after next. The crash course is on... Oh, this exam is late. In June. In June. Oh, oh, I see. I'm just trying to make a one and cover as much as I can in class. So when I attempt questions at home, it will start making more sense. Yeah. Otherwise, you should sit at a book, it's looking at you and you're looking at a book. Okay. So I think we must just practice a question. Yeah. We're going to practice a tax question. Let's look at um, what I had scheduled here. I had scheduled a question. Let's have a quick look. Because I thought today was the last one, but no, there's a lecture. We have a lecture scheduled for June. So we will, in that lecture, we will do, um, yes, on the 8th of June. Yes, at 9. All right, let's have a look at the May 15 paper. Um, we're going to do another text question, I think. Question one. So the text question is a big part. Yeah, text is huge. Eh? Let's look. Yeah, let's have a look. We're going to. I think that you and Christian are going to work together on the desk, and I'm going to watch you because I want to see how you approach the question. Okay. So, c question one, part A, asks you to calculate the profit before tax. So sometimes they ask you to calculate the profit before tax first. The reason for that is usually when there are adjustments. So if we look through the question quickly, um, let's see if I can find some adjustments. Look, they decided to change the accounting policy. Do you see? And the change in accounting policy obviously would adjust the profit number because we're going to adjust the current year's numbers, isn't it, from uh, weight, FIFA to weighted average or weighted average to FIFA. FIFA to weighted average. So um, there are obviously things in the question that haven't been done yet in the profit number. So that's that first calc. All it is is a, the, the, this calc, this first calc is just PBT given, yeah, like this, PBT given, and then any adjustments that we pick up in the question to give you PBT adjusted. Okay, so that's the four marks. Then they ask you to calculate the current tax due. The current tax due. You have to do a tax calc for the current tax due. Then at the bottom of your tax calc, you're going to put the provisional tax paid. And then that will give you the due amount. This is the 28%, like that. And then there's the provisional, right? The tax calc starts with the PBT adjusted. And then we put in all the plus or minus adjustments for tax. Yeah. Then they're asking you to disclose the deferred tax note. So for this deferred tax note, you have to do the deferred tax calc, carrying amount, tax base, temporary difference, deferred tax. Yeah. And uh, then uh, to go from the calc to the note, it's basically just these numbers and these, no, not those, just those numbers go straight into the note. Um, it's a very simple note. It just says deferred tax, and it'll just say machine, building, uh, credit losses, whatever, inventory, whatever it is. Then disclose the tax rate recon. So they don't want the whole tax note. They just want the tax recon. You know that the tax recon is all my exempt taxes, all my prior year uh, things, and all my prior year adjustments, like your rate changes, um, prior year over and under accrual of tax, etc., and all your foreign stuff. That's what lands up in that rate change. Anything from your tax calc that's exempt will go there. Any prior year stuff that you pick up goes there. Any foreign tax goes there. Then they also want you to disclose additional information, one and two. In the notes, they talk about IAS 8. So one and two must be, a ch well, we saw a change in policy. So you're going to set up a change in policy note. And then two, what was two? I saw two. I think two was the change in policy. Let's just see what one is. I think one is a change in, a change in estimate. Is that right? This is May 15, question one. 
sorry I should have said Okay, this is an error. There was an, an asset, some equipment that had a, a cost of 220. It had been shown as expenses. Yeah, so it's an error. So that's an error. So you need to do an error note. Okay, so let's go see what we're going to set up. Error note. Oh. Uh, yeah, we you yeah we usually do write on the desk. The way that the reason I want you guys to write on the desk is because then I can see what you're doing. Okay. Do you mind doing it? No. Okay. Yes. This way then I can watch you and I can see what you and Christian are doing right or wrong. All right. So come. Let's set up the desks. We're going to just flip them. No, no. Together. You're going to work together and I'm going to watch you. I'm going to work with you. But I'm not going to work, work. I'm going to watch and... and and correct. Yeah. But this is what we don't do. Yeah, yeah, you know what happens in the classes? I like students to work together to work on the desk because I can see them. But there are students that don't like to work with other students. You've seen that even in yours. Yeah. So there are students that want to be alone. And there are students that don't like to write on the desk. So I can't force people as well. But Christian and always, always, normally always writes on the desk with Ashley. <laughs> I don't know what it is. All right, so uh, required A is a profit before tax. Required B is a tax calc. So, all right, so what I want you to do is you can each do one. So one of you can do A, like Christian can do A, Nathan B, Christian C. Nathan D, yeah, and then the last one, I need a counting policy note and an error note so you can each do one. Okay, so I want you to set them up. You can take your books to see what they must look like, and I want you to set up, so it will just say required B, tax calc, and I want you to set it up, right? You can set it up this way or this way, whichever way you think is better. Here are three desks that you can use, and then you can maybe use that one for calcs if there are calcs that we need to do. They don't need to be in any specific order. So he can do A there and you can do B. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So you can start here. Maybe. You can work on this side. You can, work on this side. Maybe you can shift there when you need to. So he's going to do A. You're going to do B. So you're going to set up the calc for B. So we just, we start off with a skeleton. The skeleton of the required. No, it's fine. Let's leave it for now then. Twenty-four. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's see. We then start reading the question. JL, J Limited is a JIT Limited is a South African company that manufactures and distributes furniture. You're responsible for the preparation of the annual financial statements. They've given you some information from the trial balance. So they've given you uh, manufacturing equipment at cost, bank and cash, tax payable, inventory, trade and other receivables, cost of sales, other expenses. Uh, so do you agree that we can start working out the profit? Yeah? So Christian, somewhere you had a calc for the profit? Pro profit before tax? Okay, so they haven't given us a profit before tax. What they've given us is sales, other income, cost of sales, other expenses. So just... You need to just open a bracket. Yeah. Open a bracket, maybe, hey? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, you can either open a bracket and just put the numbers in brackets, or you can just write the numbers out if you wish. Do you agree from here? That's the profit number. So sales. Let's look at what all the P&L items are in here. This one and this one are P&L. The other ones are financial position. And then up here, these ones are P&L. The other ones are financial position. But we want profit before tax, so you're going to ignore that foreign tax. 
So not just the. Like, uh, just, just, uh, so ignore the foreign tax for now, because we just want profit before tax. Okay, so it's those four numbers. What you can do, Nathan, for me is you can start adding them up on your. Cal you've got a calculator, yeah, you do. So that then. If you just put like, it down, it's a long way to say. Yeah, otherwise, open a bracket, that plus that minus that minus that is what, the way that I would do it. I would just open a bracket and do that. It's much quicker. Yeah. 261. Yeah, I know. But There's not going to be four marks in that number. There's going to be one mark. So that's the... That's the yeah. That's what you look for. You look for are there lots of marks or is there one mark? Okay. Thousands. Okay, that's perfect. We'll work in thousands. Two, two, six, one. Where's your calculator? You can also just double check. else from there, hey? Do you agree? Yep. Okay. Then we start with the PPE stuff. They depreciate equipment at 25% per annum straight line. SARS allows a 12C deduction, which is 40, 20, 20, 20. That's a 12C. 12C is not apportioned. The 12C and depreciation for 2015 was 17400 and 213. In the tax calc, do you agree? Depreciation gets added back, wear and tear gets taken off. So in your deferred tax calc, you're going to put depreciation, and you're going to have wear and tear. Try and squeeze a bit. Depreciation is two. Depreciation is 170.4. No, 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 no. No, you're not going to plus anything. You're just going to put 170.4. Yep. In your. The, then the wear and tear is a different line, and it'll be a minus 213. Do you agree with that? Yeah, let, no, the numbers that go into the deferred tax calc are the balances on the on the equipment. So let's see. And the tax base, yeah, so there we go. And the tax base of the equipment, oh, this was last year though. Yeah, do you agree? So you take the tax base and you remove to get this year's tax base, the 213. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes that's fine. Now, they told us that the tax base of the equipment last year was 34800 do you see? This year there was wear and tear of 213. So this year's tax base is? No, it's less the wear and tear. We don't know what the 20% is because we don't know what the original cost was. We haven't been told yet. Do you agree? But the wear and tear, the tax base is just the amount less the wear and tear. So you've put it in there. Okay. So you can see that we've uh, basically just read a bit, but we've, whatever information we've got, we've been putting where it belongs. Yeah, so that we don't, when we get to required C, have to come back and read this paragraph again. But the idea is to read a paragraph, deal with it, and then move on. Yes, and plot. It's like building a puzzle. Leave it, at least you know what that note looks like. Because we're about to hit that error. During the current year, the accountant discovered that equipment with a cost of 220, which had been acquired on the 1st of September 2013. Now, when was the 1st of September 13? What's our year end? What month is it? Our year end is February 14. What's our year end? Feb 15. Okay, so there's Feb 15. He has beginning of year, which was Feb 14. He has the year before, which was Feb 13. So this is the prior year. Do you agree? During the prior year, 1 September of the prior year, there we acquired equipment for 220. That equipment we expensed. 
We shouldn't have expensed it, but we did. So we must adjust that prior year. Do you agree? We must remove expenses, we must put in depreciation, and we must put the equipment back on the balance sheet. Okay? So you've got to get the correct numbers, the correcting numbers to fix it, so that we fix it at February 14. Then, this equipment hasn't been accounted for in the current year either, isn't it? Because we just picked it up. So the depreciation for this equipment must be fixed in the profit before tax calc as well. Okay, go guys. So this will be worth quite a few marks because look, that part D required, that required that asked you for the error note. So basically like this is a decrease in expenses here? Yes, a decrease in expenses and increase in depreciation. Yeah. Look, it's 23 marks, the change in policy and the error. So the error could easily be 10 of those marks, isn't it? Or 9 of those marks. Okay, so increase in expenses. Yeah, how much? Put it in. Put it in. Okay, then we're going to increase depreciation. It's also in the P&L. How much depreciation, guys? From 1 September, what's the depreciation rate? 25 percent. Seven, 27.5. Okay, and you're going to adjust here about with depreciation. But now it's a full year, hey, Christian? Because yeah. you're working in 2015, he's working in 2014. Okay, just, uh, okay. Yeah, no, it's good. Tax. Remember, one's a plus, one's a minus. Put brackets so that you can get your tax right. So, if my expenses have come down, no. Decreasing expenses makes, okay, makes profit bigger. And an increase in expenses makes profit smaller. So, profit is going up. No, leave it. Profit's going up. Do you agree? Profit's going up. What happens when profit goes up? Tax goes up. Increase in? tax. Increase in tax expense. Remember, it's PL. So, in PL, we're working with tax expense. No, no, over here. Increasing tax expense. That's balance sheet. We're going to leave balance sheet down there. Up here is PL. Increasing tax expense. Giving you a net increase in profit, isn't it? You're going to rule off then, and you're going to have a thing. No, you're going to put your tax expense here. You're going to rule off, and then you're going to have increase in profit, and it'll be a number. So it's just different times in 8%. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to lose it. <laughs> I've got a small one here. How can an increase in tax make profit bigger? Oh, it's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Come, Nathan, Nathan. Think. No, 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 no. An increase in text. Come. No, no, it's fine. Okay, good. What happens in the financial position? Yeah, increase in PPE or machine, not assets, right? What asset? PPE, equipment, whatever you want to say. No, oh, well, it can't be the 220s because unless you want to say the two, yeah, increasing equipment cost then is what you must say. But remember, on your statement of financial position, you just show one number, isn't it? So show the net number. Just show the net number. So it's 220 minus this 25%, No, you would, there's, there's one mark in that number. And they so it's right or it's wrong. No, why? Because it's right or it's wrong. Yeah. If it's one I'm mark. Just, okay, now I'm just saying, if it's one mark, do you agree? It's right or it's wrong. But if it's so it doesn't matter yeah. if you put your calc or don't put your calc. But Nobody's going to look. You see, no, in the, in the solution, they show all the calcs. But if something is worth one mark, it's worth one mark. I mean, you've got the numbers here. Why would they give you the marks twice? You already would have got them twice there, isn't it? Okay. Then the other side is tax, right? We have to look to see whether it's deferred tax or normal tax. Tell me something. What is the story with PPE? Is PPE deferred tax usually or normal tax? Deferred. deferred. Okay. Okay, you tell me if it's an increase or decrease. I'm increasing equipment, so what am I doing? Am I increasing a deferred tax liability or decreasing a deferred tax liability? Increasing, increasing okay. That's right. So I'm increasing an asset, increasing a liability, a debit and a credit, isn't it? Okay, increasing deferred tax liability. Then the net so amount, well, it's just this times 28%. Oh, but what about your... Because the other side of this entry would have gone there, right? Yes. The other, it's just this. It's this number. This number, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it would be this times 28, which is the same thing. And it's a minus because it's a liability. No, 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 that's the deferred tax calc. No, we're not doing a deferred tax calc. We're saying what happened? Liability. And it's a minus. And it lands you with an increase in retained earnings. Yeah. But over here, please, you must say increase in profit, increase in retained earnings. Okay, we are not doing a deferred tax calc. We are just doing a note that says this was the error that we had. We didn't have equipment in our financial position. We should have had. That equipment would have resulted in a deferred tax liability, an increased deferred tax liability. That's it. Okay, the only thing that you're missing in this note is your story. Okay, you can write blah, blah, blah for now if you want, or you can write your story. Your story is exactly the story that would be here. So it would be this. Yeah. Manufacturing equipment acquired 1 September 2013 was incorrectly recorded as operating expenses. And then you say the error has been adjusted retrospectively to, to the previous year. Hmm? Just copy it. Yeah. Whatever information you've been given, you copy it. So you can write your blah, 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 or write XXX because you're going to write that. But I don't think that we're going to do that now because it's just a waste of our time. 
Okay, so number one is done. Do you agree? Let's see what else there is. I think there should be more because we need balances on these assets. Otherwise, we have to work backwards. Maybe we do. Oh, okay. Now, you know what, Christian? You're still missing numbers on your deferred tax calc. You're missing a carrying amount. Yeah. You're going to have to work backwards, my boy. Oh, no, look. Here's the number. Here's the numbers. Okay, so your carrying amount is the 852 less the act dep, right? Yeah. But then you must adjust for that error. Yeah, so basically I have to put each Yeah. Okay. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you. you can just do a little like star at the bottom of your calc and then say that that's that. Calc, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or a little number one. Okay. So if you have to do a calc for a number and you don't have space for it, but you don't want to do a huge big calc for it, where's there a red one? Yeah, you can just do like a little number one, and then you can just do like a little one, and then just put whatever your calc was. So your calc is from your trial balance, because this says that this is at February 15, eh? Yeah. So at February 15, it's 8:52. Less 443.75. And then we're going to put in that adjustment for that error. What are the numbers? Just give them to you from there. Um, plus the 192.5. Which is the after, which is the net amount. And then minus your depreciation for the current year. Do you agree? Sorry? Don't leave that there because it rains and it gets wet and nobody takes it. <laughs> you know the where the reception is around there? Yes. So if you just walk, and you, you just go in, you'll see a door right there. There's a lovely little young lady there. Her name is Megan. You can give it to her. Thank you. No, that's it for now? Minus the 55. Okay. So do you agree? Our machine is the machine that we were, we had, which was given. The equipment less the ACDEP. But then we had to bring in this machine that had never been brought in. So we've brought in the 220 less the 27, which was last year's depreciation, less the 55, which is this year's depreciation. And then that's, you're going to add that all up together. And that's going to be this number. And then you can work out the deferred tax for that. Yes. It's the carrying amount straight from the trial balance and then with our adjustments for the error. Five four five point seven five? Brilliant. Okay, then we've worked out our deferred tax. So that minus that gives you that. Times minus twenty eight percent gives you the deferred tax. And now you can put that straight into your deferred tax note. Yeah. Equipment, 117026. Is it accelerating our tech? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Can you see the approach to the question? We never have to come back to this paragraph one. We've put it everywhere where it belongs, isn't it? It doesn't belong anywhere else. There's nothing in there that's permanent difference, so it won't have an effect there. The, we've put, oh, you know what we haven't done is we haven't fixed here. Okay, so you need to come and fix here. So yeah, what you had done with starting a bracket was right. Yeah. So just start your bracket, put those numbers back in the bracket. And then you have to put in the depreciation and you have to take off the wear and tear. Oh, uh, you know, and I, does that? I don't know. 
Maybe that takes business, James. Yeah, I should fix also. Should I increase? I didn't fix that in my solution. Yeah, so we should, like, uh, should we increase tax base? Yeah, we need to increase the tax. Although it says here, yeah, you can assume this to be correct. I don't know. Okay. So Let's just leave it for now. We've got it done there already. No, this is last year's. We're in for this year is 20%, right? Because it was 40, 20, 20, 20. It won't be, yeah. The cost was 220. And last year, SARS would have given the 40%, so this year, SARS is giving the 20, right? 44. Okay. And we move on. I just want to see what I had here. Yeah. I did adjust my deferred tax for that. Um, I did adjust my deferred tax. Eh? And you know what? I don't know if if we've misread if I misread it or we misread it. Which one is the which one is depreciation? Which one is wear and tear? The two one three, or is depreciation the one seventy? The depreciation is the two one three. Wear and tear is the one seventy. Okay, so you've got them flipped, haven't you? In your so just swap them round. Because I was wondering now why mine doesn't agree to yours. And Christian, I did adjust the tax, the tax base. Okay. So just fix it there. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the put a little number two to calculate the revised tax base. So the tax base would have been the 217 whatever. Oh, what was the number that was there before? 21, I'll tell you, 340.8. 340. Point eight. Point eight. And then you're going to have, on that 220, you've got two years left. So 44 times 2, basically, or 220 times 40%. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Two years left of tax base there. Okay, yeah. Oh. Hmm? Yeah, gives you four twenty-eight point eight. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, just changes just changes all the numbers. Sorry, now you're using fingers. This error note's finished. Yeah. Okay, so before we move on to inventory, can you see how it's a f that error affected balances here as well? It affected there and it affected here. Yeah? Because we had to increase depreciation and there was extra wear and tear. It affected here. There was depreciation for this year changed, so it affected there. It affected the carrying amounts of our assets because that 220 asset wasn't in this carrying amount, so we had to fix it. So there's lots of marks, say, eh? like you're saying, oh, shucks, I have to put it there, I have to put it there. But yeah, there are marks in that, putting it there and putting it there and putting it there. Yeah? yeah? So that error is not just the marks that you would have got here, but it's the marks you're getting from fixing everything around. Okay. 
Change in accounting policy. Are you ready? Changes in policy are easy to do, right? The directors decided to change the accounting policy from FIFA to weighted average. Now, that story goes in as a story, yeah? So, oh, you've written there, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. That whole story would go in as a story, right? The financial director indicated that the value for the prior years could not be determined due to a virus in the software. So, we're not going to be able to go back, yeah? So, those years, we're only going to be able to fix this year. Okay, so you can just put a line through them. Yeah, yeah just take a red pen or, or a green pen or something and just put a line, yeah, put a line through them. So, and over here, you would say it could not, could not adjust retrospectively. No, you, you, yeah, you can leave it out. Yeah, you can leave it out, but you must now go and say in your story, which you would anyway because that's what's here, isn't it? The financial director indicated the value of inventory could not be determined for prior years because of a virus. No accounting entries have been made by the accountant. So the only thing we're going to be able to change is the current year. So it's going to be such an easy calc to do, isn't it? So you just need to work out that change and the tax impact and see if it's an increase or a decrease in inventory. And then the other side goes to cost of sales. Do you agree, Christian? Okay. And then whatever adjustment you make to cost of sales goes here as well. Okay. We're going from, from we're going from FIFO to weighted, eh? So are we increasing or decreasing? We're increasing. We're going from FIFO to weighted. No, no. Look, we we're not going to do these years because we can't. We don't have a number. We're doing this. So it was 6.56 and now it's 6.92.50. Just check that Christian's getting the right numbers on your calculator. So your calculator's actually worked out fine, huh? Yeah, this one, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, now I can use it a little bit. Not yeah. fully, but I put me this uh, CFI one and the NBB is straightforward. Yeah. Okay. That was the calculator I had when I was at Varsity and I liked it so much. And then my kids broke mine and it didn't work, so then I threw it away. No, but I liked it. Okay. Yes, that's right. So that change is an increase in inventory. Do you agree? And if I increase inventory, I'm debiting inventory. I will credit cost of sales. Eh? So what happens when I credit cost of sales? It's a... What happens if I create cost of sales? It's a decrease in cost of sales. Do you agree? Yeah. All right. So then put in the tax numbers. Look what they say. SARS uh, will accept this new policy. SARS will accept this new policy. Mm. It goes to cost of sales. Cost of sales. Yeah. Any change in inventory, that's where it goes to cost of sales. Yeah. Inventory is not uh, 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 one of it's it's one of those assets that's not going to be around for a long time. It's go, it goes out the next year. So whatever we do, we just stick it in cost of sales. It would anyway just disappear. Whereas those other assets, uh, your investments, your investment property, your PPE is going to be around for a while. So we don't want to hit PL or cost of sales. That's where we put. Yeah, with inventory, because inventory is going to anyway disappear. Within the next year. Inventory always goes to PL. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be revaluing all the time. You should. This uh, change in policy. Oh, yeah, but that's more like writing off, isn't it? You're not yeah. writing up, you're writing off. Yeah. That's just saying my inventory is not worth that. Because, because the last lesson you said that there would be adjustments. Remember, it's normal, yes, normal. But if you say you're going to be assets, normally go to evaluation. But not inventory. <laughs> Only non current assets. And inventory, we don't do the rebound. You take changes in inventory to rebound. 
Oh, no, you don't. I'm sure you don't. Just go check that. No. I've never seen that. What happens here? Okay, that's fine. You can just wrap up the deferred. Because what would, this is what would happen with uh, income tax. SARS will either accept the policy. If they do, then it's current tax. SARS will say, sometimes SARS accepts the policy going forward, but doesn't accept it going back. They don't reopen. And that's when you have deferred tax. But that in this case... They're accepting the policy, so it's all current tax. So let's look. Decreasing cost of sales, decreasing tax expense. Mm. Decreasing cost of sales makes bigger profit, bigger tax. And then there we're increasing inventory. It's a debit, and we're increasing current tax due, which is the liability. That's perfect. Okay. So what do I say on the side? Okay, so now here, you're going to put the adjustment that you made at the cost of sales. It's going to affect my profit. And profit goes, yeah. oh, goes up. Uh, and you say inventory adjustment. So like valuation of inventory gains decreases and profit gains decreases? No, it goes to cost of sales. I've never, I don't no, know. I mean, the normal. No, any change no, no, in. I'm, I'm <laughs> any, any, any. Valuation? It goes to cost of sales. <laughs> you don't put it on the balance sheet as a reval at all. Creative accountants, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, that was the easiest change in accounting policy we've seen in a while. All right. Um, allowance for credit losses. The balance of allowance for credit losses last year was 45. The movement is included in other expenses. All right, so what is the credit losses provision at the moment? It's sitting there in the TB. Is it the 63 funny number? Or is it the 35? It's 35. So last year it was 45. Is that right? This year it's 35. So it came down. Okay, so that it came. It's thirty-five. What was it last year? Yeah, that was. Oh, yeah, so it came down. Yeah, so it came down. Also, came down by guess. ten. Yeah. Okay, so that coming down by ten, we must reverse here, and only twenty-five percent of that would be allowed. Yeah. But it goes the other way, right? Yeah. So allowance for credit losses PNL is a ten, a number of ten. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. But normally we would add it back but now we're not going to add it back because it went the other way so we must minus it yeah. do you agree okay good so normally we would reverse it yeah. so we would add it back and yeah. then you say tax allowance for credit losses tax which will be 25 percent do you agree with that yeah. and it's going to be the opposite way and it's going to be 25 percent and then you're going to put a credit loss allowance into your into your into your deferred tax calc there do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna put uh, allowance for credit losses and you're gonna put the carrying amount in the tax base. The allowance for credit losses there is the balance, right, Christian? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can also do that. I, I prefer that way, but you can also do the other way. It's the 35, the number on your balance sheet. And it's a minus because it's a liability. And then on the tax base, that's the 25% of that number. Do you agree? What? Oh, uh, yeah, you're working in thousands and everywhere else you're not. Rather just work here. Do you mind? Just work in, in rands everywhere. Even though your brackets, because then here, can you see? There you've worked in rands, and there we've worked in rands. Yeah. But it's okay to leave your brackets in thousands, but then maybe put 
the zeros on the. I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. It's also a minus. Oh, yeah, so it's like a minus plus yeah, so scenario. I like. So then we've put the allowances there. Okay, let me show you. Do you see the net amount that you have? Seven and a half. If you did it that other way that you were saying to me, then you would say, yeah, so it would look, it's the same. It gives you the same answer. This is the way I like to teach it, but in tax module, they teach you the other way. So in tax module, what they would say is they would say, reverse the prior year allowance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And put in the current year allowance. Okay, but then you have to do the same for tax. So for tax, it would be 75% of that number. So that comes back to the 10. But then you have to do the same for the tax. So for the tax, you have to put in 75% of that number and 75% of that number, and that number would come out at that. So it's the same thing. I think so. Because your principle when you're doing the tax calculus is always to think what went through PL, what should go through the tax calc? Yes. Plus minus. Yes. And then you just say 25% of Yes. Of the movement. Correct. Of the movement. All right. So you've got a difference there? Which is an asset now, right? Yeah. Allowance for credit losses. Allows for credit losses. Mm. But that's what for your throat. Oh, those are sweets. Mm. My, uh, uh, I've got diabetes in my family. My dad was diabetic. My grandfather was diabetic. A lot of my uncles were diabetic. So um, I got diabetes quite quite a long time ago. But it was I wasn't on medication or anything. I'd been diagnosed. And then I was just careful, like with what I ate and whatever. And then, but then when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, I got quite bad diabetes pregnancy in my pregnancy, and I had to use insulin injections because that was the only thing that you can use when you're pregnant. So then after that, my diabetes is not so. But at the moment, it's okay. I just need to be careful and I need to exercise. That's why I walk or run or swim every day. No, I don't run, sorry. I walk or swim or elliptical or whatever. All right, where are we? Okay, good, huh? You happy so far? So far. All right, next. Peace. We're almost done, I think, right? It's just to do with the, maybe the foreign tax. I see we haven't done anything for that yet. Oh, okay. He has those provisional payments. No provision has been made for tax for 2015. The SARS accepts the accounting treatment of... Okay. Provision for 2014 was 115100 We paid 137200 Yeah. And in that was 12000 of interest. So before, just on that piece sorting out the prior year. Do you see that we're going to have an under accrual for the prior year? Because we accrued 115, we paid 117, 137. What we also have is we have an interest payment. Interest that we pay on late or on tax is not deductible. So you're going to have to work out how much is your under accrual and how much is your interest because both of those land up in the tax recon. And one of those, the interest, lands up here as well. Okay, so do that calc for me. How much is under accrual and how much is interest? Your yeah, interest paid, tax, you can just put tax in a bracket.
Yes. It's not a straight 10 because there's a hundred rand there. Yeah. <laughs> you like to do it in your head. I can't do it in my head, but you've got your calculator right there. 10,100? Okay. Okay. No, no, it goes there. It's a prior year thing, yeah. So you can say prior year under accrual. Do you agree? Any prior year things go in there. 10,100. 10, 100. And it's going to make my tax bigger, so it's a plus. Do you agree? Okay. Then this interest paid is exempt. It also at 28 percent just put there exempt yeah no it goes exactly the same way that it goes here so it's interest that you paid that's exempt. So it means you're going to have to pay more tax. Do you agree? Because you're not allowed a deduction for it. So it increases your tax. So it's a plus. Okay. We happy so far? All right. Now we have the provisionals. There were two provisional payments paid in 2015. They make the amount that's due smaller. It goes down there at the bottom of that count number B, the one that you were doing there. Provisional tax at the bottom there. 65 plus 70. That's 135. Hmm? Okay. Foreign income. The company receives income from the UK, which is not taxable in South Africa. They paid foreign taxes of 15,000 on this income. What else do they say on it? Nothing. Okay. So foreign taxes. Um, what was the amount of foreign tax that was on the, our P&L? 157. Okay, 15,750 is this 15% 15 tax. Do you agree? Yep. Okay, I need you to work out, we always work out two things. What is the foreign income that I need to put in? And then the amount that, because this foreign income is not deductible, so it goes into my tax calc as not deductible, isn't it? And then in my recon, I'm going to put the difference between this percentage and the 28%. Isn't it? 15 minus 28 and times this foreign income. That's going to be the amount that's going to go in my recon. All right, so. Income, 105 is fine. No, it's gross. Yeah. It's gross. So there's foreign income of 105. It's sitting in my profit before tax. Do you agree? And it is not taxable. Mm-hmm. And it's a minus, right, Nathan? Because if you don't put a bracket, if you don't put it the right way, then you don't get the mark. It's foreign income, which is not taxable in South Africa. Okay. Not yet. Okay, then there's a recon here. We did pay tax. We paid 15. In South Africa, we would have paid 28. So tw 15 minus 28. So we paid less tax. So we're going to have a minus there. So your, your calculation is 28% minus 15%. Yeah. So put in a bracket, 28%. 28 minus 15 minus 15 percent of the 105. Okay. So that is like 13%. Yeah, times 105. 
because it lands up as a minus 13, right? It's a minus 13. Okay, I think that's it. That's it, right? So now I want you guys to just total up everything, pull the numbers through where they belong. And then uh, I'm going to give you a solution so you, or then you can check the solution. Just. Yeah, we can see if this balances. Hey, your check over here is it must balance to current tax plus deferred tax movement, but we don't know the deferred tax movement. Yeah. Oh, that's it for tax. I don't think we know what the movement is. Did I do a check? Mm. No, it's fine. You can just check it against my um, my solution then. Just uh, let me see if you have my solution or not. Because that's the other thing that I want you to check is if you have solu what you have solutions for, and what you don't have solutions for. So, was it useful to do or not? Need to learn. Learn the notes, learn the calcs, learn the formats. So that then when you get OSTA required, you know exactly what it is that it's going to look like. It's the same because your numbers just Yes. Formats are the same. Yeah, formats are the same. So the first thing to do when you start? Format. Plot it out. Do you know what it also helps you to do? Not only is it good exam technique, it's good to do because it helps you to give you time to process. Okay, this is where I am. This is what I need to do. That time that you're writing that out, it's giving you time to settle down into the question and to really be aware, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing in this question. This tax calc, deferred tax calc, tax recon, whatever. Then you start reading and you do bit by bit. The worst thing you can do is do it required by required. Do you agree? Because you know what? To finish, to do required A, you would have needed to have dealt with the change in accounting policy. You would have needed to deal with the error. You would have needed to deal with so many things, isn't it? Even with the interest story. And then you would have had to go and read those again when it was time to do the error and read them again when it's time to do the tax calc. Really. Because I always say to you what this piece, no? Like, yeah. Yeah. Then I would see, okay, this is not here, not here, not here. And I go through, and I go through, yeah. through it again and again. And again. Yeah, again and, and again, and you know, again and again and again and again. And you can't finish and do it all the way. So you put a skeleton down, you can start slowly, slowly. Slow. Yes. And then the other thing is, like, let's say we didn't finish and we never got to the foreign. Then it's fine. Then we don't have foreign anywhere. But at least when you did your error and you knew what the numbers were, you put the numbers everywhere. Isn't it? You earned all the marks. As you go along, you do the calcs. If it's a tiny one, do it like that. If Like this one, right? This one was a calc. It was a bigger one. You do a bigger calc. If it's a bigger calc, you do a separate calc. If it's not, try wherever possible just to do a bracket. Because like here, because of time. What are you looking for, Christian? Okay. It's possible that... Uh, yeah. This one is yours, right? Yeah. No, this one I think is his, because this one is yours. Um, are you just? Let's see. There was one that had some writing on yeah. it. Is this you? No, no. I think just Is this one yours? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that was my fault, because I was picking up everywhere. And the solution pack is it yours or is it his? Okay. All right, so the only extra solution I gave you today was October 15. October 14 you have from last time. Hey, There are past papers there from all the way back from 2010 with solutions. All the solutions are there now. But we're backwards. Like now we've done October. We've done May 15, question 1. Now then go and do May 15, question 2 when you get a chance. Please don't leave it for a month. I know your exam's only in about a month, but if you leave it for a month, everything you know now, which is not bad, eh? especially for you, Christian, it's good. Your knowledge is good. It's going to go. 
it's going to disappear. Yeah. Then you're going to start the question and you're going to say, shucks, what do I do again? I don't remember. So please just try, like, I know your exam timetable is full and you're worried, but somewhere, you know, it's not a good idea anyway to spend the whole day working on auditing, for example. Yeah. It's always good to do something else and then come back. Yeah, so... You, I know that you're working in the day. I don't know how many hours you've got in the evening to devote to studying. Oh, okay. So maybe you spend a bit of time, like not every day, every second or third day, come back and do a question on this one. Just because otherwise it's so long. Yeah, otherwise it's so long. Mm. But the main sections of work are tax and changes, tax, tax and changes. That's what we saw in this question is basically tax and changes, right? And yeah, we had a change in estimates and, uh, uh, no, we had an error and a change in policy. The change in estimates you probably find will be in question two because they all are all, always all there. And then here, the tax calc is here, the deferred tax calc is here. So in, probably in question two, you'll find a change in estimate. There might be a little bit of tax. We didn't see a tax note, so maybe a tax note. Deferred tax, they always like to ask, isn't it? Sometimes in both questions, deferred tax. What we didn't see in this one either is the deferred tax movement. Um, but the other one will have the provisions. It will have the revenue. It will have the framework, the fair value. It will have all of that. Question two. We can have a quick look at it, but uh, you know it's something that you you will um, yeah you'll have to do on your own. Let's just see. Question two. What is question two's required? Question two has two parts, as a, as a part A and a part B. Part A asks you to prepare all the journals, journal entries for a number of transactions for 21 marks yeah so it's going to be your provision journals your revenue journals it, your changing estimate journals then number two b asks you to disclose it asks you to disclose a check ias 8 this is going to be a change in estimate because already question one asked you for the error and the change in policy so they won't ask you that twice so this will be a change in estimate disclosure, which goes in the profit before tax note. Eh? And then they, there's disclosure for events after reporting, and there's disclosure for provisions and contingent liabilities. You just have to know what those notes look like, isn't it? So that's for 16 and a half marks. So you would set up uh, uh, your format. And then B, part B is a little bit of a discussion question. They ask you to discuss for framework for six marks. They ask you to do fair value for four marks and what is is there a C just those that's it ten marks yes two little uh, two theory sections we did framework and fair value framework and fair value the two theory sections we did they always ask them whether it's for a few marks or more marks but it's more or less around this it'll be more or less around this sometimes a bit less Sometimes that one's a bit less, sometimes this one's a bit more, isn't it? But it's more or less. More or less that. So when you hit this question too, if you want to quickly go do the theory first, you can get it done. If you think you can get those 10 marks, then do it, isn't it? That's 10 marks. And then you can go and do the question. But, you know, there's extra time in this paper, but you just yeah, never know. The, the first question... Um, the first question was, um, I don't know, the, the, I'll tell you now, the first question was 52 marks, it says 62 minutes, but you're not going to be allowed 62 because they've made your paper bigger, isn't it? So it would have been times 1.8, just do a calc for me there, what it is, 52 times 1.8. Ninety-three minutes, so an hour and a half. That is more or less how long you took. Yeah, if you think about it, that is more or less how long you took because it's just after quarter past now. But we were also talking and going through some principles first. And when you're working together, it's always going to take a bit longer because it's two of you to checking and talking and whatever. So it's doable. Yeah. Um, 
Sorry, you were asking why they made the exams longer. I think it's because there's such a jump from second year, third year then into honours. Because, you know, your honours papers are six hours. Three hours in the morning, an hour break, and three hours in the afternoon. So, for the same exam, right? So, a financial accounting exam would be three hours in the morning, an hour break for lunch, and three hours in the afternoon. And they just it's such a jump from a two-hour exam into one of those. So that's why they try to stretch your exams to get you used to writing for longer. They say that they don't give you more work to do, but I don't know. I think in time it will creep. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't. But for now, I don't think it'll be that much. So your paper will still be 100 marks. And remember, now you have 180 minutes for 100 marks. So it's 1.8 minutes a mark. But they will tell you anyway the time. So just keep tabs on that time. Don't overrun the question because you never know. You see the wrap-up that you just did, which took, I don't know, 5, 10 minutes. You don't earn enough marks in that wrap-up to make up for the marks you would have earned if you started the next question. They've proven that. Marks are always earned more in the beginning of a question than at the end of a question. So I know we want to complete, I know we want to make it neat, we want to wrap it up, but if there's no time for that, there's no time. When your time is up, your time is up, move on to the next one. If you can catch up time on the next one, or if you find yourself stuck on the next one. That's why also in terms of exam technique, if you're stuck, try to move on. Try to keep moving, isn't it? Don't stay stuck because you're just showing the examiner what you don't know. You're stuck showing the examiner what you don't know, isn't it? Just move on. Okay, I couldn't figure that out. Okay, I'm going to just move on. If you find yourself moving on too much, then maybe you didn't know enough to pass the paper. But you know what I mean? It, they, you, you Don't stay stuck because you're there to show how much you know for every minute. Every minute that you're writing, how much do you know? So if there's stuff that you don't know there, just move on. Maybe you can come back and finish stuff that you do know. Okay. So we are scheduled to meet again on the 8th of June, Wednesday. It's a Wednesday at 9 o'clock.